my name is Sophie and today I'm here to talk about my favorite books I read in 2019. So a few ground rules here. I'm not gonna count rereads and I'm just counting books that not necessarily I gave five stars but that just really stuck to me throughout the year. So yeah, let's get right into it. So my first favorite 2019 is The Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. So I picked up all three because I read all three this year but this is the first book and wow this series is just amazing <laughs> i love the first book i love the humor i love the characters i love the world book two is my favorite because it has pirates and it has zamira jokasha which is the best fucking character uh, the best the best is Locke and jean but like zamira is up there i love her but yeah the series just really stuck with me it has not many flaws really not many flaws at all it's just so well done it's just so perfect this first book especially this is masterful okay the way the flashbacks and the current events are placed because one complements the other and it's just so good next book i read and loved is nowhere girls by amy reed so this is a hard-hitting contemporary a genre hard-hitting and contemporary that i don't read often and I loved it a lot. I tabbed it as well. This book was just overall made me ugly cry <laughs> because it's about like these girls in the school who formed the Nowhere Girls Club because of the toxic masculinity in their place and a girl that used to go at their school was gang raped. You know, it talks about that kind of stuff and how the guys who raped her are still loose. And yeah, it's just so powerful so good i love this group of girls and also during the book we have we have little interludes where we get little paragraphs from from the perspective of random women and we don't know the women's name we don't know their story we just know a little paragraph and they're heartbreaking and i love this book a lot next book that i read and loved in 1019 is the broken earth, earth trilogy by nk jemison so i also read the entire trilogy this year and i also loved it and it's just so beautiful i love the series mostly because of its themes and its magical system the magical system is with like tectonic plates and that kind of stuff and how that affects the entire society and how people who can move to tectonic plates are like oppressed but they're also needed for the society to work it's just such an interesting dynamic it talks a lot about oppression it also has at its core in books two and three a theme of mother-daughter relationship and i just think this is nk jemison is a master okay she transcends genre to write the story she wants to tell and she is amazing next favorite i have is stacy jones and the six wow who would have guessed i know but this book it's getting very talked about i know people like to see how it looks and it's getting very talked about in the book community or it was and i picked it up and i loved it i love daisy i hate billy but i love daisy and overall this book was just so interesting and it like gripped me because i love stories that are like the people are old now and they're telling telling the story of their lives of when they were young i love that and Lisa Jones does it perfectly. I think has some really interesting themes with addiction and being a good person and fame. And I love it a lot. Next one is Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence. The final book in the Book of the Ancestor trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies of all time. And of course I loved it. I loved it. I love Book of the Ancestor. I love Mark Lawrence. I'm gonna start reading another series of Mark Lawrence, like today. And... And this book is just so perfect because the characters in the series i've gotten so attached to, the, to these characters is insane and just like their relationships to each other it's so well crafted you can really feel you can really realize them as characters because of their relationship to other characters so every little character has their little relationship like we never talked but she looked at me wrong once or like stuff way deeper than that and it's made me so emotional has some of my favorite scenes ever half of this book is just war and i ship two, two characters here so much and overall i just 
I love this book a lot. Look at this. This is the latter half of the book, okay? Orange is stuff I like and blue is scenes I like. That's a lot. <laughs> and I love it. Next is Into the Drowning Deep by Amira Grant. I did not think I was gonna love this as much as I did. I tried to get into horror more this year, but and I picked this up because oh, it's Mayor Grant with Shannon McGuire, a very popular author, and some of my, some of the booktubers that I watched like this. So I figured why not pick it up, and I loved it. I love it so much, especially something I didn't think I would love, which is the science element here, the marine biology, the oceanography element here, which is very present because it's multiple perspective, and some of these characters are scientists and marine biologists and oceanographers. And I love that part. I also love like how different of a character group we have on the same ship out into the sea, the ocean. And this book I think is just phenomenal. Sure, the ending is a little bit lacking, but overall it's just chef's kiss. It's beautiful. Editing me here, sorry for the bad angle and shit. I'm sitting on my own legs. But I forgot to mention like one of my top three favorite books this year. I don't know why. Oh my god, I'm gonna fall. Wait. Dark Dawn by J. Kristoff, the final book in the Nevernight series, which is like my favorite series. I don't know how I forgot to mention this, but amazing finale, amazing characters, amazing world, blah, blah, blah. You know what it, what it is. I'm going to reread this to annotate this soon. I got it. I, it came out in September. I got an arc in May, the May 1st, which is kind of insane. But this book is like my top three of the year because I just love the character so much. I love the world it's in. I love everything about it. And... I cried, I laughed, I screamed, all the range of emotions while reading this, so yeah, I don't know how I forgot to mention it. <laughs> Next books are The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden and The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. So I like this series a lot. The first book is not here because I didn't love the first book, I liked it, but when it continued I started loving it more and more. I don't know why, I just like I was so enraptured by the story and I just couldn't stop. I love Vasya. I love her relationship with the the guy there that I don't remember the fucking name. I also don't remember anything from this series because I read it too fast because it just needed to know what was next. All I remember is the fact that I love the battle here. I don't remember the battle, but I love I remember I love the battle. And I love Vasya. And I will reread this soon, but this is one of my favorites of the year. Next is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This book is the one best romance of the year. It won a lot, a lot of things of best book of the year and with a reason because it's great. It's a basic fanfic -y romance, but it's with the Prince of England and the first son of the United States. And it's so funny. I reread it and I tabbed it. That's a lot of fucking tabs. But it's just, it, this book feels like home, okay? I love Henry and Alex so much. And also, I love their friendship group. I love the politics in here, even though they're not the center of the story. I thought people, I've seen people be like, oh, but we didn't talk about politics enough when it's a book about, but it's not a book about it. It's a book about a romance. The politics is just like the sprinkle on top of an amazing story. And I love these characters. I love this, this perfect little world where, <laughs> Uh, and the first son of the United States is bi and he's dating Prince of England and the president of the United States is a woman and yeah just this book feels like home to me it's beautiful even though I'm not an American you might have noticed with my accent but whatever next book is my favorite book of the year Gideon the Night by Tim Sue Muir um I've talked about this book a lot a lot um in almost every video I make I talk about this book um it's beautiful it's amazing. I read it three times. Once as a dig digital arc, second as a physical book, and third as an audiobook, and it's been greater and better ever since. Something I... It's about lesbian necromancers in space, if you didn't know. It's beautiful. The characters are amazing. The entire group that we revolve around has to have such interesting and amazing dynamics. The ending is a gut puncher, but also something I wanted to mention. Some people say that the world building is confusing, non-existent, bad, and I agree with the confusing, completely disagree with the other two, because I have read the second book, okay? <clears throat> Alright, the second book should be right down here, but 
I only have a digital copy, but I have read the second book, and it's like up here with my favorite book of the year. And okay, every dialogue in this book, ev almost every scene, is there for a reason. It's there to show you something. And sure, it's confusing. I didn't understand what was going on until 40% of the book. But to say it's bad is wrong because everything has a payoff. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I have read the second book. It comes out in June, either June or July. And it's so purposeful. Everything here is purposeful. And if you like that kind of world building, pick it up. Just know that you have to wait until June, July to finish it. But yeah, Gideon the Ninth and Harold Ninth are like my favorite books of the year. Next is a book I did not think I would love it as much as I did, which is The Arithmetist by Brendan Sanderson. I love Sanderson, but I didn't think this book would make in my top favorites of the year list. And ironically, his other book that came out this this came out in 2013, but his book that came out this year, Star Sight, did not make it on my favorites of the year, which is weird. I did not think this would. But this is like a middle grade YA-ish story about this guy who has who's not a arithmetist who has no powers with chalk in a school where most of the people have powers with chalk and he desperately wants to be a arithmetist he loves the, their lore he loves learning about it it's pretty much based in math and stuff and this book is just such a fun ride it doesn't have a continuation until <sighs> and we're probably not gonna have it until 2025 but fuck this this book is so good it's so much fun i once i retold the story to my eight-year-old uh, cousin and she loved it <laughs> and I just think this book is just so much fun I love the characters I love the old mentor I love I love I love it, all of it next is a book I did not think I would love as well but Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein so I've owned this since 2017 and I read like 80 pages and put it down I was like oh, I don't like it okay uh, flash forward to this year when I watched Cindy from Ridley Cindy's video saying she liked it a lot and I was like, okay, it's short, right? Why don't I just give it a try, read in one day, see what I think, just so I can read another book on my physical TBR. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it so much. I love the atmosphere. I love, I don't usually love this, but I love the writing and the prose a lot of the characters. I love how, how, I love the liberties this took as a retelling of Frankenstein I oh my god I just kept I don't usually write in books but I kept writing here it's just like things I thought were great like oh my god look at this this writing choice it's beautiful for an example this is all writings all my handwriting for example um, I love the way things are described the focus is on how, how they feel not how they look and the other annotation on this page is the way the story is written feels more stream of consciousness than an inner monologue or the narration of actions and it fits the story perfectly. So I just kept writing this because I was loving this book so much. I Oh my god, this book is just so good. Next is a book I don't own, which is The Institute by Stephen King. When it started this year, I, I, I was prepared to be surprised with my favorites of the year, but I did not think that a Stephen King book would come into my favorites but it did because i read the institute and i loved it i read it um during rock in rio if you know what that is it's the uh festival here in brazil i went there and i in the beach i started listening to the institute i, I listened to it on the flight back to my hometown and i loved it i love luke ellis i love the institute kids i love all of it i think it's I think it's not perfect I think the cop storyline could have been cut and I think the ending could have been a little bit better but overall I was just really attached to this characters and their situation and everything and I loved it a lot a lot a lot also you might have noticed I'm not giving synopsis because these are otherwise it would be way too fucking long and I'm on a time limit here <laughs> next book that I loved is Sakio Girls by Claire Legrand so I once I started reading Furyborn like a few years back, the arc, and wasn't really feeling it, so I put it down. But I discovered this year that one of my new favorite genres is sapphic or feminist horror. So I was like, oh, this is sapphic horror. 
let me pick this up, see what I think. Yeah, I love it. Look at this. Look at my tabs. I love it. I love the writing. I love the writing a lot. I love that sometimes you have a little interludes with the rock they're in, the Sokil rock, as being a sentient being, and it thinking, and it's saying, oh, I'm gonna get that to these girls. But in a way more whimsical way, I love the horror element. I love Val, the one of the main characters. I love her. I love the ending. I think the ending was amazing. You can see like a lot, a lot of tabs just in the last pages. Cause, oh my God, I just thought this book overall was really, really good, really, really fun. And I recommend it to anyone looking for more sapphic horror as I am. Next and last book on my favorites list is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. So I have a weird history with this book because when I was in middle school, like fourth, fifth grade, I think that's elementary, right? Whatever the fuck. When I was in elementary school, I used to, I was a Percy Jackson reader and I still love Percy Jackson, but I used to see people, like three, four people reading um, A Buslo de Ouro, which is the name of this book in Portuguese. And I was like, ugh, they should be reading Percy Jackson, which is the superior series. I was a snob, but whatever. But then the TV show was gonna come out this year and I said, why not read it already since I'm going to watch a TV show? Bitch, I was so wrong. I love this book a lot, a lot in the TV show. I love Lyra, I love the themes, I love Yorick, I love pretty much the entire book and I think, oh my God, it's, while I was reading, I felt so at home, which is not something I feel a lot of times, but I felt so at home. I felt like, it felt like a warm hug, even though horrible things were happening to Lyra. And I already ordered, ordered, I already ordered book two and three. Book three has arrived, but book two hasn't, which is driving me nuts. But I'll finish the series as soon as I can because I loved it a lot. So those were my favorites, but I'd like to do a little like honorable mentions. Just quick honorable mentions, not gonna talk much about them. Okay, so I'm gonna do the honorable mentions in a very rapid fire kind of way. So here we go. On the cover by Angie Thomas. City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Oh my god. Heartstopper Volume 1 and Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. Sorry, I think people are coming into the house and I need to wrap this up. Um, Nevermore by Morgan. Wow. Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Oh my god, this is hard. City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. And last but not least, The Gilded Wolves by Russian Chokshi. Oh, and also The Sentence of the Crane by Joan He. So yeah, those were my favorite books of the year, my honorable mentions, most of the stuff I liked this year. And yeah, my name is Sophia and I'll see you next time. Bye.